Hello everyone, hope you're doing well, and Arnie does too. Now in today's video, I'll be going through the strange and confusing world of glowfish and other man-made fish. And I'd just like to point out, I won't be attacking people who love man-made fish and glowfish, as I think one of the best things about the aquarium hobby is there's so many niches, and everyone can find their own part of the hobby which they enjoy. And man-made fish in general aren't a new part of the aquarium hobby at all, as the goldfish is still one of the most popular fish in the aquarium trade, and the goldfish itself is a man-made fish, as they are thought to originate from an Asian carp species, but some of these carp had a golden colour mutation and then were selectively bred so that more and more goldfish could be created. And there's records of goldfish being kept over 2,000 years ago, so ever since humans have been keeping fish, they've technically been creating man-made fish. But the term man-made fish is used quite loosely, as the gold colour mutation can easily happen in the wild without any human interaction. And this golden mutation has happened in quite a few freshwater species, for example the golden tench and the golden orf. But that brings us to the first kind of man-made fish, the mutants. Now a mutant fish is any aquarium fish that's had a genetic mutation and then has been selectively bred because of this mutation. So if one fish is born with long fins, they can then be selectively bred to create more and more fish with longer fins. And there are many aquarium fish that have been selectively bred because of their mutations, with some examples being long finned koi and pretty much any non-wild better that you see in aquarium stores. And in some cases this can be completely harmless, but in some cases these mutations can actually affect the quality of life of the fish, as you can buy short fin rainbow fish and gouramis, and these fish have less vertebrae and are more compressed than the wild specimens. And this can hamper their ability to swim, and it also puts extra pressure on their organs, and this can lead to digestion issues. And then of course you've got the many strange forms of goldfish, such as the bubble eye and the telescope eye, which would simply not survive in the wild. But on the other hand, these fish were not bred to be released into the wild, and in this setting of an aquarium, they should come to no harm at all. But that brings us on to the second type of man-made fish, the hybrids. And hybridization can happen in the wild, as many trout and salmon species are known to hybridize with each other, and these fish live quite a normal life, but in most cases are sterile. But a lot of aquarium fish suppliers tend to hybridize fish that won't meet each other in the wild, as of course there's the very popular flowerhorn cichlid, which is thought to be made up of many different fish. And then of course you've got parrot cichlids and hybridized betters. And in most cases this is pretty harmless, as if they're able to hybridize, they're pretty closely related anyway. But the next form of man-made fish is by far the worst, and it is physically modifying fish. And I'd have to say that around 99% of people in the hobby will agree that this should not be done, but it seems to be popular in some parts of Asia. And physically modifying fish is any way in which you alter a fish's body by either tattooing, dyeing, cutting or painting the fish. And all these practices are very harmful for the fish, and in many ways is torture. The dyeing or painting of fish is either administered through an injection, where the fish is usually injected multiple times with a fluorescent pigment, or in some cases they're stripped of their outer slime coat, which is essential in fighting off infection infections and bacteria, and then they dip them in dye and put them back in the water. These practices are very harmful, and a lot of fish die in the process, or shortly after, and I'm pretty sure that everyone will agree that this type of modification should never be allowed. But finally we move on to our last type of man-made fish, and that is the genetically modified fish. And as you can probably guess, these are fish that have been genetically modified to either make them more colourful or more appealing, and this of course includes glowfish. Now luckily glowfish are not injected, painted or dyed in any way, and actually inherit their lifelong colour from their parents. But the story of where they originally got their colour is quite remarkable, as they were not made for the aquarium trade at all, as originally scientists in Singapore were the first to genetically modify fish to fluoresce. And a long term goal for these scientists was to detect toxins in water so that polluted waterways could be identified and the local communities could stop using the polluted water. And the first step was to make the fish fluoresce all of the time, and then the eventual goal would be that they would fluoresce in the presence of toxins. And one of the first ways in which they did this was to genetically transfer a visible glow by inserting green fluorescent proteins from a marine jellyfish into a zebra danio. And this practice worked, as the fish glowed in both normal and ultraviolet lights. And then other genes from corals and anemones carrying red, purple and yellow proteins were eventually inserted into other fish. Hence why there is such a selection of glowfish that you can buy today. As the colours on offer today are starfire red, sunburst orange, moonrise pink, cosmic blue, galactic purple and electric green. And the fluorescent fish that you can purchase are tetras, sharks, danios, betters and barbs. But glowfish aren't a type of fish at all, as glowfish is actually a company and that means keeping glowfish is a little
little more complicated than if you bought any other fish from an aquarium store. Because if you buy a regular fish from an aquarium store, you can take it home and pretty much do whatever you like with it. And if the fish is happy enough to breed, you can then sell on these fish and make some money. But you can legally not do this with glowfish, as the glowfish is patented and there are a few rules and regulation regarding glowfish breeding. And if you breed your glowfish, you must never sell, barter or give away your glowfish. As if you did this, you would be breaking the law, even though it would be very hard to find out you were doing so. Along with this, you're also not allowed to release your fish into the wild, but this should be a rule with any fish, as there are hundreds of invasive fish around the world, causing millions of pounds or dollars of damage and threatening native species. And I don't know about you, but this feels very strange to me, as a large company now owns a certain type of fish. As if a company was to genetically modify a dog so that it glowed, and then sold these dogs to people with the rules that they cannot be sold on, and their pups cannot be sold either, I think it would get a lot more attention. But the whole legal side of this fish's creation is very confusing to me, so I won't spend any more time on it. But apart from their dazzling colours, the glowing Danios or the glowing Tetras are not any different from the fish that they were created from, so they behave in the same way, and of course have the same care requirements and diets. And as the fry of these fish will also be fluorescent, then there's no need for human interaction at all, so it's a pretty harmless practice and causes no harm to the fish at all. And fluorescence in fish is nothing new either, as there's over 180 species of wild fish that naturally fluoresce under blue light. And glowfish are still illegal in some countries, but to be sold in America they had to go through a lot of tests to make sure that they were not harmful and that it was a safe practice for the fish as well. And obviously they passed these tests, meaning that it's a pretty harmless process. And since 2003 when the first glowfish were introduced into the United States market, they have found their own place in the aquarium hobby. And although there'll be people like me that prefer the wild variants, there are thousands of people that love these glowfish. And quite a large percentage of the people that are interested in getting glowfish are children. And this is a great way for young kids to get into the hobby, as the glowfish breeds tend to be quite hardy fish. And today the glowfish has become so popular, as in the US it has around 15% market share among all aquarium fish sales. And in 2017, Spectrum Brands, which also owns Tetra and Marineland, bought the glowfish IP from Yorktown Technologies for around $50 million. So whether you love them or you hate them, glowfish are going to be in the hobby for many years to come, and they do a great job of getting kids into the hobby. But that finally brings me on to the question of this video. Because fluorescent fish started off with danios before moving on to tetras and now freshwater sharks and betters. But where will it actually stop? Because of course I can't comprehend the science behind this, and I don't know if this science can be applied to bigger fish. But is it possible that one day we'll have giant glowing gourami, or giant glowing arowana? You'd have to think that if the science is there, it will be done eventually, as I'm sure there's people out there that want to own a glowing arowana. But of course there'll always be people like me, and I guess some of you watching, that will always like the wild variants the most. But that's about it for this video, and if you guys have any thoughts or keep glowfish, let me know down in the comments below, as I'll be interested to know what it's like keeping them. But if you like the video please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these but until next time goodbye